Howdy, folks. We are live. Are any of you guys out there? Can any of you guys see and hear me okay? Can you see the screen okay? Do we have any trouble at all with the browser? All right, I see people trickling in there. I don't see any comments yet. Go ahead and uh, post in the comments if you can see everything. Let me know if you need me to zoom in on anything. I think I probably should zoom in here at least once. Let me know if that's visible. You can see what's going on on the screen, and we will go ahead and get started. Hey, Jake, how's it going? Is there anyone else out there? I just see Jake right now. Zoom in a bit more. You got it. How I don't want to go in much more than actually, I'm going to back this off once. How's that? I don't want to go in much more than this. I hope this is okay. I see people trickling in now. That is good news. We will go ahead and uh, get started here in a minute. I want to make sure that we get as many people in here as possible before we start today's content. I'm sure I'm likely to get questions. So the more people that can actually watch the presentation, uh, the less questions or the more similar questions that we can get. So we'll go ahead and get started here in just another moment. I want to make sure that there's enough people to trick in, trickle in. Sorry about the technical difficulties today. Uh, we will work on being 2% better tomorrow. Will this recording be available on YouTube later? That is actually a question for Jake and Jacob. I do not know. Um, I would be happy to, uh, I'm sure we can do that. We also have tutorial videos, which I'm going to show you that cover a lot of the same stuff we're going over uh, today, Vanessa. So I'm sure we'll be able to get you some of this content in one way or another. Great question, though. Brian, I demand 3% better. I'm not surprised that you do. You are always demanding better from people. Um, okay. We will provide recording. Yes, I'm just hearing now uh, from one of our one of my teammates that we will absolutely uh, have um, a recording for you. Julie's asking, Ryan, do you still have your Apple calls? Yes, I do, Julie. Those are March calls. I'm holding on those for a while. They, those are rocking and rolling right now. Yes, I am holding those. Uh, we're at 22 people here, so I think just a couple of more and we'll go ahead and get started. Cypher. All right. Yeah, we are picking up. Okay. We are at 28. Um, Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, again, there will be a recording. So if you missed the beginning of this, we'll be able to, to go back to it. Uh, I'd be happy to take questions at the end. I'm sure we're going to have some, some similar questions here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Everything looks to be good. You guys can hear me. Uh, we've zoomed in on the screen. Uh, keep me posted here uh, on any, on uh, what we're doing. So let me go ahead and bring up the agenda. Uh, I had asked a couple of my other teammates who work with the Benzinga trading school to give me some topics to 
cover today. So we're actually going to be covering the news feed, the sources and the categories. We're going to be covering movers. We're going to be covering details and give you a little bit of charting tips and tricks here with InPro. We're going to set up a watch list and I'll show you how to set up alerts as well. And then I'm going to direct you to the help site, which has a lot of other content that you're going to be able to view at your leisure. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm assuming that everyone in here has at minimum a basic understanding of Benzinga Pro. So what you're looking at right here is called the dashboard. This is actually a fresh workspace. We have no tools added to it. So um, before we get into this, I want to quickly explain some of the lingo that I'm going to be using during this presentation, just so that we're all on the same page. You might already know this. If you don't, I'm just going to breeze through this here real quickly. Um, first of all, the each individual screen or tab that you're looking at is considered a workspace. OK, uh, in a workspace, you can add different tools. You can add any combination of one through four tools to any given workspace. And as far as I know, you're not limited to workspaces. As you can see, I've got a bunch up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen and a temporary 14th one. So clearly there is no limit here within 14. Um, tools, that's what we call these different things. The news feed, the advanced news feed details. These are the different tools available to you in Benzinga Pro. So uh, the combination of all of these workspaces is considered a layout, right? So we've got layout, workspaces, and tools in descending order. Layout is going to be everything. Workspace is going to be the collection of tools, and tools are going to be the tools themselves. So the first thing that we're going to start off with here is the newsfeed. And I'm just going to use the advanced newsfeed for this particular demonstration. The reason for that is the advanced newsfeed is at complete parity with the regular newsfeed. The difference between these two is that the advanced news feed gives you many options to filter the news feed on different criteria, whereas the regular news feed doesn't really give you those options. Um, those options, ooh, let me turn off my phone. I forgot to do that. My apologies. The um, the advanced news feed, the big set of filters that you get by using the advanced news feed can be found in the screener button. And we're going to touch on those in a little bit. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about sources and categories. And this is um, this is extremely important that you understand the basics of what's going on in order to effectively use this news feed. And I'm going to cover some of the pitfalls that newer users run into that I've discovered over the course of my, of my discussions. So let me go ahead and get intercom out of here as well. All right. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on sources. And in here, this is going to list the number of different sources in which you can get news from in your Benzinga Pro platform. What's important to note here is that as you select more of these sources, you're going to see more and more news. By default, the only source that is on is the Benzinga wire source. And this is our aggregated news feed that's being curated by our news desk. Our news desk, all they do is parse and read news. They're very experienced with it. I go to them when I don't have question when I have uh, questions about a particular news item. They are the experts. They are the one curating this feed. It's going to be a mix of our articles, our analysts, our researchers. We're also going to put Dow Jones Newswire articles in there, Bloomberg, Reuters, uh, all of those big uh, news services, and we do that obviously, so that you don't have to have different subscriptions all over the place. Um, the next big one that I'm going to talk about are press releases. Press releases are predominantly how companies disseminate public information or, or information to the public, excuse me. Um, if you actually click on the word press releases, not on the checkbox, but on the word, it will list all of the press release companies that we have available here in Pro. When I turn these on, I don't pick and choose any of them. I simply click the box for press releases and that turns them all on. Understand that if you turn that on, you're going to be getting a lot more content within your news feed. So be sure that that's actually what you want before you go ahead and do this. Now, um, the, the second thing that we're going to talk, oh, let me, let me quickly go over the rest of these categories. A Benzinga Reach, this is a new source that doesn't have data yet. Uh, we were testing and it, the result is that it ended up in the list here. I would just uh, ignore this for right now until we update that. Benzinga Signals, this is our automated algorithm that's flagging different transactions that happen within the market and then reporting them in real time. So some examples for this would be things like price spikes, option activity, unusual option activity, block trades, 
halt and resumes, um, 52 week highs, et cetera. Uh, the signals has its own tool, but if you would prefer that information in line in your newsfeed, this is the option to do that. I normally use the soft because I like separating my signals into a different tool. And we'll go ahead and show you that here in a sec. Uh, Benzinga wire, Espanol, France and Italia. Obviously this is our Benzinga wire in different languages. Uh, Investors Observer, I believe this is another test. I don't believe there's any content on here yet. Again, we're always trying to expand our offering. So you should expect to see increased content over the life of your subscription in one way or another. GG Press is news predominantly out of Japan, printed in the American English instead of the Japanese kanji so that it's readable uh, to Westerners that don't know that language. Uh, I actually don't use this. I find that most of the important news that I'm going after uh, comes through the Benzinga wire or through a press release. But if you're doing some of the nitty gritty, uh, if you're looking into niche markets and maybe you can't find a piece of news, you might want to take a look at GG Press, not something that I use um, personally in my own trading. Partner links, this is going to be other uh, uh, companies that we have some type of association with, whether it be Seeking Alpha, um, Guru Focus, TechCrunch. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of others. These are like alternate uh, places where you might find articles that may or may not move stocks. Uh, we already talked about press releases. And then obviously the last one here is the SEC. This is an API to the Edgar database. Uh, this is going to allow you to get SEC forms directly from Edgar without actually having to go to the SEC site. I use this myself because I just feel it's a little bit easier. I'm already in pro as it is. So I created a separate workspace to handle this. And this is where I, I do my research for it. And we'll show you that here in a second. So that pretty much takes care of the um, news feed and sources. Uh, I want to quickly go over some of the other features that you can do in this news feed and why it's important. Now, um, as far as categories go, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of these categories. Categories can be a very, very effective way of filtering news down to something very, very specific. So if your intention is to eliminate a bunch of noise or to set up a very, very specific screen uh, for finding news, then you might actually use categories. The, the issue is, especially for newer users that aren't sure um, what news would be tagged as or what news to even expect in the first place, this can actually be a detriment because what happens here is that when you come into this categories menu, anytime you check some of these categories, you're telling the system to only show you news to, that corresponds to the categories that you've selected. So in my example here, I selected some fairly common ones that people would use, exclusives, general, hot, M&A, and news. These are very, very common categories that a lot of stories are tagged to. So I went ahead and just selected them. The problem is now is that if there is a specific piece of news about a stock that you're actually uh, waiting for or you're looking for, like let's say, for example, um, the CEO does an interview with somebody and we tag the piece of news as interview. Or in another example, uh, someone comes out with a, you know, a unusual trade and they have a trade idea and a thesis set up about that and they have a nice write-up about that, that might be classified in trading ideas. If you don't have these checked, you're not going to see that piece of news. And that often then leaves the end user saying, well, boy, I missed it. Or, or, or Benzinga, you missed it for me. No, that's not actually what happened. You set up filters that precluded that news from being added. So is when, you, especially when you're new, one of the things that I would suggest is either don't use category filters until you're sure, uh, until you understand how the category system works, or uh, you can use category filters in one news feed and then open up another news feed right next to it. Remember, uh, each tool is going to allow you to apply your own settings to it. So uh, you can make these tools achieve different things as you're using them. And so if, if what you really want to do, is, if your end result is to say, well, boy, I only want to trade um, stock or I only want to trade news catalysts of these specific categories, I completely understand that. And if that's what you want to do, that's totally fine. 
what I would advise, my first pro tip of the day here, please, especially when you're learning, go ahead and open up two news feeds. Right here, you'll see I have the same source selected on both of these, right? I have the default Benzinga wire source that we've talked about already. And on the news feed on the left here, I have five categories selected. Notice that the news feed on the right looks different. I mean, clearly we can see it just from the shading. But let's take a look here and say this um, th this this is actually a whim. These are these are also whims. Ah, here we go. So uh, there's a news post here for AMRN. It says Ameren shares are moving higher. Deal reporter highlights an activist share in the stock. So we've seen this before. This will often cause a stock to pop and move. And if you're trying to day trade this, maybe some of those levels are going to be important to you. Well, you'll notice in the news feed on the left, this story is not even here. We can't even see it. So again, this would be a hypothetical example of, well, if you're looking for trading ideas through your newsfeed, if you do not select that category, you're not going to see them. So I always, always advise that you keep a newsfeed open here that's unfiltered. Uh, as you're actually parsing and going through the news, it might be worth it for you to actually click on the news headline so that it shows you these tags at the bottom of the news story. You might think to yourself after after seeing this news post, well, boy, trading ideas and movers, those are great categories. Let me go ahead and turn those on real quick. Uh, and then I believe movers is in markets, right? Uh, no, where is movers? Oh, that one's already that one's already selected. I believe that's in news. In any case, the there this is this is another one of the problem movers and shakers. So this is another one of the problems with some of these subcategories, which we'll get to in a sec. Now that I've gone ahead and turned that on, look, that AMRN post is now in my filtered news feed as well. So this is going to be my the, the first tip. I highly advise newer people do this. Keep two of these open uh, or keep two of these open at a time and make sure one of them is unfiltered. The other reason that this is very important is let's say that you're, you know, talking to somebody and they and they whether it's another student or Mark or or whoever it is. And you want to look up news that took place in the past. You want to look up a headline. I'm looking at my news feed right here. I don't see Tesla uh, ticker anywhere in this news feed. I look at Tesla. It's sold off out of the open and then uh, was bought back up. So I want to see if there's any news affecting Tesla. If I type in the ticker at the top of the news feed here, you'll notice I can filter by stocks. However, if I do that on the news feed that also has my category filters, now I've layered filters on top of each other. Not only am I only looking for news posts that apply to a Tesla, but they also need to fit into one of these six categories. That's not good if I'm trying to figure out all of the news for a specific stock. So if I have a news feed open with no other filters on it and I go ahead and type in Tesla in here, I'm going to get a more populated column with news in it because it, there's no other filters that need to be applied to this. So just another reason why you'd actually want to keep that a second news feed open. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure I didn't miss any questions in the chat. Uh, hi everyone. Do you have a link for this? How much does it cost? Hi Ryan. Ryan, can I correlate? Uh, can I correlate news plus a volume pop? That is a great question. Yes, you absolutely can. So one of the things that you'll notice is that uh, stocks will often pop on a piece of news headline. Uh, so one of the things that you can do, obviously, is when a piece of news comes out, you can mouse over it to see the uh, to see the the actual hover over, and that might give you an indication on how much this is up. Like for example, oops, sorry, I'm really messing it up with my mouse here. Hormel Foods. This piece of news came out. Piper Sandler bumps up Hormel Foods price target by nine percent. Hormel Foods is trading up at uh, one point eight four percent today. Does that have an effect on it? I don't really know. Maybe that's not a tradable headline. Good to know though, right? Uh, Piper Sandler, really reputable firm. Nice to know that they upped their price target. Maybe that specific piece of news might not be enough for a catalyst for a new trade. If you're holding that, maybe you want to see that. Maybe that helps you uh, with your plan there. So um, one of the other things that you can do, and it might be a little tough here because I've, I've zoomed in so much, but one of the other things that you can do here is you can actually load up a details tool with your news feeds. So if you noticed what I did there was I just clicked on the ticker, that opened up the details tool, and uh, I selected the chart tab. This gives me a chart at a glance, right? So if I'm going to go, this is a daily chart. Let's zoom into an intraday chart and see what happened here. Boy, IIN, 
I-I-N-N, excuse me, this thing popped out of the gate here. It's actually appeared on my scanner earlier. This went into an upside halt, gave it all back. So um, now we're looking here, it says Inspiria technology shares are trading lower uh, on profit taking after the stock rallied roughly 125% yesterday. So if we take a look back here, yes, this stock did go up a, a whole bunch yesterday. We actually had a pop out of the open today. We were unable to clear out yesterday's high. So that should have been your first indication that this is probably not going to continue. This stock reversed. Now we're back at balance here around a four handle. So just to kind of get back to your question here, can you correlate news with a volume pop? Sure. Uh, it real, A lot of that depends on how you have your platform set up. In, in this case, uh, I might be very I, watching these news feeds. As an, a, a new piece of news comes out, I can click on that. And if I have an intraday chart selected, I'll be able to see if volume is actually pouring into that name or if that headline really didn't have any effect uh, on that. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, but um, that is one way that you can actually do this. Now, um, that should, uh, let me actually just do one more thing here with the advanced news feed. Um, of course, you can filter it by a watch list. This is really straightforward. You literally just click on watch list and click on any of your uh, already created watch lists. You can use the watch list tool um, to create those. And we're going to cover that here in a sec. Um, the other filters that you can do are you can, you, you can use the screener. And this is where it's going to allow you to filter this by price, market cap, float, short interest, whatever field we have in here, you will be able to filter your newsfeed to only show you news about stocks that meet that criteria. So if you like trading stocks that are between one and $20, this might be a great filter for you to put on because now um, you're only seeing news for the stocks with that price point. Be, please remember though, if you add that to a newsfeed where you already have categories set up, uh, sorry, let me turn off my notifications. I'm getting blown up here now. Um, if you if you do that on a newsfeed that you already have categories set up, you run into the same problem. You now have layered uh, um, filters put on, so they need to meet both of those. So if you're going to do something, uh, if you're going to filter by a price, you may might want to consider whether or not you want to use categories. Totally up to you. There's not a right or wrong answer. I'm just trying to teach you how to avoid some pitfalls with missing news. Um, I'm not going to cover all of the different variables in here. I would encourage you to go through these variables on your own and see if any of these are important to the trading style or the trading strategy that you deploy on a regular basis. Um, okay. And, um, Adam, great question. You're asking about the shading. When we get to the details tool, which is going to be right after movers here, I will show you exactly where that setting is. So sit tight. Great question. Um, all right. So next we are actually going to cover movers. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is clear out these tools to get me back to a blank workspace. Um, it's important to note that in practice, you don't want to do this. Remember, whenever you open up a tool and then set up some type of filter or settings, it is saved to that individual tool. So you, you saw that I had opened up a filtered newsfeed. I had applied some category filters to that. Well, if I click on advanced newsfeed again, it's going to open one that has no filters on it. So if you, if you spend time setting up a tool for something specific, it doesn't matter what tool it is. Movers, newsfeed, details, calendar, doesn't matter. If you set up a tool for something specific, don't close it. If you need to do something else, create a new workspace that solves that. So you'll notice here in mine, I actually have 13 different workspaces and they're all designed to do something different. I have a main workspace, which is kind of just a mix of things. It looks all weird now because I'm so zoomed in. I have one for movers, uh, which is, is basically just giving me movers and a details chart. And this is actually what we're going to cover here in a sec. I've got one for whims. I've got one for earnings. I've got a calendar. I've got an Edgar one, which is basically just an SEC feed. I was looking up insider buys here with form four. So there's a number of different things that you can do. My recommendation would be to create workspaces that solve different tasks for you instead of opening up a tool when you need it and then closing it when you don't. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Trust me. So in any case, going back to movers here, uh, we actually have a great default that I would advise you use or at least start off with. And then you can kind of tailor it to your own needs. It's called the What's Moving Scanner. And if I click on that, it's going to load up the Movers tool and the Details tool. And if you recall from just a second ago, this is the exact setup 
that I use on my movers tab. Um, the only difference is that I've arranged the tool by kind of shrinking the movers a little bit. And then I've clicked on the chart tab of details so that I can see the chart. And what's cool about this is that anytime I click on these tickers, it goes ahead and loads it in the chart right next to me. I don't have to click on it every time. If I go ahead and add an indicator like a moving average, and I'll go through this here, uh, the how to do this in a little bit here. Let me make this, this a little bit easier to see. Go ahead and make that line thick with three C's, of course. Um, now you can see this line a little bit more. If I click on a different uh, stock, you'll know that you'll notice that that moving average is maintained on your chart. Again, if I close this and reopen it, I'll, I'll lose that work. I don't want to do that. Now, one of the reasons why we're showing this tool is because this tool is absolutely awesome. In fact, um, this tool was really the tool that caused me to break away from uh, the, the scanner that I have in my broker. I use TD Ameritrade, so I use Thinkorswim as my trading platform. The scanner is awesome. The reality is that it's very difficult to use. There's a lot of specifics, and if you're not sure how to use those, uh, it might be more frustrating than helpful. Movers is not as powerful as that scanner, but it's super easy to use by comparison. And so let me show you how I use this tool every day. There's not one right way to use this. This tool basically shows you, hey, what is moving? Doesn't matter if it's to the upside or the downside. If something is moving, it should be in this tool. So um, what I do every day with this tool is it's actually the second, the first tool that I use. The first thing I do when I load up Pro is I turn on the squawk so I can hear if Charlie is going to squawk anything. Squawk is our audio feed that reads breaking news as it's present. Um, I use my eyes for so much during the course of the day. It's nice to be able to take in information using a different sense. Uh, it allows me to do more at the same time without spending any extra effort on it. But I digress. Coming back to the movers tool here, um, this is what I do every single morning. I don't apply any filters to this other than gainers, pre-market, and session. So what this tool allows you to do is it allows you to see things that are going up, going down, or both up to you. It allows you to select which session you want to do this in, the pre-market session, the regular session, or the after-hour session. And then it also gives you some period aggregations, right? So if you want to see what's moving over the last five minutes, you can do that by clicking five minutes. I generally don't use that very often. I would say 98% of the time I use session because I want to know what's moving across the entire session. I don't necessarily want to break it down into smaller little chunks. Um, so let me just go through the, the chat here. I'm sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, is it also the case for charts? Are drawings maintained on a chart? Yes, Vanessa, great question. So you're asking when I was giving my explanation of the indicators, yes, drawings are saved to the individual chart. So if you do a whole bunch of drawings on a ticker, do not close that details window or you will lose them. Great question. Um, I like the sound of what, Ryan, what's your chart indicator? What program are you in? Uh, Ryan, your chart has indicator. Is that what you program in? I basically just added a moving average. I'm going to go over adjusting some of those indicators uh, in a little bit here. Just in case anyone is looking for the home workspace that Ryan is working off of, you have to hit the plus in the upper left and that opens up a blank workspace. Jason, great tip there. What he's talking about is this little plus here. It might be hard to see on my screen because I've got so many tabs across the top. If you only have one or two, that plus might be over here. Uh, so it's this plus button that will allow you to add a new, a new workspace. Remember, you're not limited as far as I know. Okay. Uh, another good question here. Can you move the windows within the workspace? RM? No, not yet. We are actually going to be refactoring the way our layouts work in the near future. I believe in early 2022. Uh, at that point, you might be able to drag and drop them, but as it is right now, you can't. The only way that you can reorder these is close them and then open them in the correct order. I know that's frustrating. We hear you. We are going to make that better, but right now it's not available. Now, um, Getting back to the movers here, one of the reasons why I, I use this so much is because it's very, very easy for me to figure out what's going on in the morning, right? So I can come in here and I can click on this. Let's take a look at, at this is QTT. Uh, so you can see here, this says that it's up by 900%. Stock looks relatively flat. I'm willing to get that this was a reverse split that hasn't been uh, affected in the system yet. So I'm actually going to ignore this first ticker and I'll work with the dev team as soon as I get off this presentation. The next ticker, however, gives us a great example example of what we're talking about. And I will address the purple shaded area here in a sec. 
The reason that this tool is so great is because this allows me to very quickly go through all of the stocks that are moving and try to figure out why they're moving. It doesn't tell me if I should trade it. It doesn't tell me where the buy spot is. It just shows me what's moving and it puts the ball in my court as a trader to decide whether or not I'm going to take this. Is the trade set up good? Um, is, is this something that I understand? Is this a tradable catalyst? All of those things are going to be left to you. This tool is just going to show you that data. So if we take a look here on AVCT, um, you'll notice that what I have selected here is gainers, pre-market, and session. And as mentioned, this is going to show me the things that are going up in the pre-market session. It's only looking at the pre-market. It's not looking at yesterday. It's not looking at the regular session. It's only looking at the pre-market. This is obviously the session that I use when I first sit down at my computer because the market hasn't opened yet. Once the market opens, if I want to use this during the course of the day, I would click on regular and you'll see that this list updates once every minute. Um, uh, as data comes through. The, the data is real time, meaning it's the most updated data, but the tool itself only updates once a minute. If you need faster latency, I would recommend using the scanner tool. And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. Boy, I'm running out of time. I got to speed this up. Um, all right. So what I normally do here is I do gainers, pre-market and session. And then I click on each of these tickers. I go down the list with as many as I have time for. This gives me a view of the chart. I normally keep this on the one minute chart because I want to see what some of those near term moves are. And then I can also click on the, uh, the daily chart aggregation, get an idea of what the daily chart looks like. Let me uh, turn this off, get an idea what the daily chart looks like. In some cases, I actually might want to draw some levels here. I noticed that this stock is in a really kind of a nasty trend uh, right now. It looks like we're kind of trying to break it. I'd actually shorten this up here. We're trying to kind of test that trend line, but we're really not having a lot of success. I can do any types of drawings on here that I want. Uh, some of the favorite, I get asked about this all the time, Ryan, where's the fibs? It's called the Fibonacci retracement. It's in your drawings tool in the third icon down. Pick uh, If you wanted to use this, just pick a low point on the chart, pick a high point on the chart. I like to extend it out so I can kind of see those different levels. Boom. Now I have all of those Fibonacci levels marked right here on my chart. I can determine whether or not these are going to be levels that I want to um, trade the stock around if it in fact goes and tests those. Uh, you can do this pretty much for, for anything, right? It, it really, you can adapt this to any trading style that you want. If you want to trade things that are going down, if you want to either buy a bounce or look to short things on weakness, uh, all you have to do here is click on losers. And again, it will show you uh, all of those stocks that are moving. It's only going to show you the top 100 results based on percent change. That's really important. Okay. So again, it's only going to show you the top 100 results based on percent change. If you need more information than that, again, use the scanner. That was a tool that was developed to shore up some of the shortcomings in movers. We didn't want it to replace movers because one of the benefits of movers is that it is so easy to use. It's literally a couple of clicks and I have a list of all of the things that is, that's moving. What's more is that when I click on each of those tickers, my news desk often has done a lot of work to figure out why this stock is moving. And if they've figured out a reason, you'll see it printed here at the top of the details tool in this blue box titled, why is it moving? We abbreviate why is it moving as whims. These are reasons why a stock is putting in the move. This can drastically reduce the amount of due diligence and research that you need to do to understand what it is that you're looking at. So in the case of ticker AVCT, American virtual cloud technology shares are trading higher. The company on Thursday announced strong guidance for its candy business unit. Okay, great. One of the themes that we've seen over the past several months here is that companies that issue or raise strong guidance often perform better the next day. It almost doesn't even matter what the earnings number is. What seems to be more important in this environment is the guidance. So reading just that sentence, I totally understand why the stock is up in the pre-market today. The next thing that I would have to do as a trader is determine whether or not I'm going to trade this and figure out where those key levels are. Again, one of the things I might do is draw some price levels to see where this is going to interact, maybe identify any type of trends, and then, of course, paying attention to the volume. If you use things like RSI, MACD, or some of those other indicators, you can do that. You can add indicators 
simply by clicking on the indicators button at the top of the chart element. In here, it will list all of the indicators that are available to you. I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it right now. Volume profile is not one of them. We are working on bringing that to you. It's not available yet. I'm sorry about that. You are not going to be able to get that in these charts. I know a lot of people seems to be the trendy study right now. A lot of people seem to really like that. Just a quick note there. Um, the rest of the studies that are available to you are in this list. And what's cool is that you don't actually have to search for them. If you know what you're going after, you can start typing it in, right? So if I'm going to go ahead and add a moving average, I can just go ahead and start typing in moving and you'll see all of the different moving averages that we have available. So here's regular moving average. Let's say I want to add three of them. Well, I'm going to go ahead and click on it three times. Now I've already added one. So now you'll notice that these three moving averages are up here in the upper right corner and they're all the MA9. Well, it doesn't make any sense to have three indicators with the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change them. Again, I'm going to mouse over them and click on the gear cog. In here, I have the ability to change what it looks like. I like to make the lines thicker because they're easier to see. But in addition to that, I can also click on the length. And now I can change this to say 50. This gives me my 50-day moving average. I'll go ahead and change the next ones here to 100. And then the last one here is 200. Boom. Now I have the 50-day moving average, the 100-day moving average, and the 200-day moving average. And I can adjust the way they look. I've got two of them here that are yellow. That's not going to do it for me. Let me go ahead and change one of those to fuchsia, which is a really fun color to say. And now it's, of course, much easier to see on the chart. Now, uh, getting back to um, uh, whose question? Was it Adam's question about uh, the... These are called session breaks, right? These, this purple shaded area is denoting the extended session. So both the after hour session from yesterday, as well as the pre-market session today. The unshaded area represents the regular trading session. Now, to turn this on, you first must select an intraday chart. So that means you need to have a chart selected with a time aggregation smaller than one day. If you're on daily, weekly, or monthly, you will not be able to turn this option on because these charts do not show the different sessions. Um, so go ahead and select an intraday chart. My favorite is always going to be the one minute. Then you can click on the gear cog in the upper right corner of the chart element. And in the appearance menu, you have a number of different options to make this chart look a specific way. So you'll notice here, this first one here is session breaks. And if I toggle this on and off, that toggles the shaded area on and off. I can also choose what color this shade is. So if purple, which is the color color of royalty. If that's not a color you really enjoy, go ahead and select any color that floats your boat. It's also worth noting that you can change the background here uh, to any color as well as changing some of those grid lines. So if you like grid lines or don't like grid lines, you'll have the ability to change that. I encourage you to go through these settings and set up the chart the way that you like it. Uh, if you know what you're looking at uh, on a chart, you're probably going to be able to perform better. Um, one of the other things in here, I wanted to cover was, I think that was an appearance. It was watermark. Okay. Watermark. This is the option that turns the ticker on in the background of the chart. A lot of people like this. It's especially good for when you're sharing a screen in a setting like we're in right now. But if you really like that on your charts, this option is called watermark. So again, click on the settings cog in the upper right corner. If you want to turn on session breaks, you must be on an intraday chart. Uh, otherwise, this is going to be grayed out and you can adjust any of those appearance options there. Okay, so that takes care of the movers tool. Let me catch myself up in the chat here real quick. Uh, hey, Chelsea, how's it going? You're right, Squawk is awesome. Um, I remember you showed a chart only feature as well. Is that still planned for release? Great question. Um, really quick, let me just cover that. The you, any Any one of you is going to be able to access our beta site, which is probeta.benzinga.com. If you have a Benzinga Pro account, you have access to our beta site. Our beta site is where we keep the most, the, the newest, 
features and fixes. So to Thorsten's question here, uh, he was asking about what we're calling the chart widget. And so the chart widget is basically in the beta. You'll see here, it's just chart. And when I click on on those, I can add up to four of those. You'll notice that the t unlike the details tool, all of that stuff on the top is missing. That's been removed intentionally so that you can see more of the chart. So this is what you're trying to do. This is how you do that. Thorsten, to answer the second half of your question, yes, this feature is planned. And as far as I know, it's still on track. They don't give us release dates for these features. We're expected to test them in the wild first. And when we polish them up, then we move them to production. That's a great question, though. All right. Now getting back here, let me, let me finish, uh, let me finish going through there. Whims. That's so useful. I use it all the time. I miss the fib tool says Mimi that's in your drawing tool along the left hand menu bar of your chart element. And remember you have to be on the chart tab of details. If you're on overview, you're not going to see it. If you click on chart, you should see it right there. If it's hidden like this, if your chart looks like this, you're the the button is tucked away down here in the bottom right-hand corner to show the drawings toolbar. Another good question. Um, Got to use my university colors. Go blue. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Now, let, let me just finish up with the details. We, the other thing that we had here is we obviously spent a lot of time on the charting. And, and you know, charting is... is personal to every trader. Everyone does it a little bit differently. There's tons of settings. You can customize it as you wish. The other thing that you can do here is you can actually click on the news tab and the new, remember when you have a details tool open, you're focused on one stock. So all of these sub tabs are going to give you targeted information about that stock. So if I click on the news tab here, I'm only seeing news that applies to this ticker. This makes scouring the news to see what's going on here much quicker because I don't have to worry about other tickers and, and things of that nature that don't really apply to this. So obviously, if you click on overview, you kind of get a combination of all these, right? You get this quick, lightweight chart that doesn't allow you to add indicators or drawings on it, but still gives you an idea of what the chart looks like. You get a news feed right beneath it where you can kind of separate out some of the different sources. You have key data on the right. If you scroll down here, you're going to have a description of what that company does in the bottom corner. So all of this stuff is very useful. I use this on a regular basis with due diligence. It's also worth noting that you can access the calendar here. So just like the news, it's automatically going to be filtered to the stock that you have. You can review the financial reports. You can actually export the financial reports to CVX, CSV. Excuse me. So if you're some type of Excel magician and you can uh, you know, do a whole bunch of work using um, Excel as, as your program, you can absolutely export this and throw it into Excel. You can see uh, other peers with this stock. Um, you can see insiders. This is actually something VIN, one of our ACE developers got for us. You can actually see all of these different uh, insider transactions and see what the insiders are doing. And if you need some of that key data, you have that as well. So the details tool is where I spend a majority of my time when I'm doing my due diligence. Uh, there's a ton of good information in here. When I use it in conjunction with the movers, I leave it on the chart tab. Okay. Uh, we already talked a little bit about charting in terms of setting levels and, and, and indicators. Again, um, levels I denote with drawings. Um, it's also worth noting if you want to make yourself notes, you can, right? So if you want to draw some cool arrows to a breakout point and then put like a balloon there, with some text that says, hey, this was a breakout. Um, if you ever you know, want to come back and review those, you can do all of that stuff here. All of that is done from the left-hand toolbar, which is called the drawings toolbar. The indicator bar is at the top. We already talked about that. One more thing to really quickly show you here is that your time aggregation menu might not look like mine. Yours might have one M in there or just a D in there or something of that nature. In order to add more of those for for quick access, all you have to do is expand the menu and then star the time frames that are important to you. I love the one minute chart. I love the five minute chart. I love the 15 minute chart, hour chart, daily chart, weekly chart for some of the strat based stuff that I'm looking at. So I go ahead and star those. That means that those are going to be available here for quick access. I don't have to go into the menu every time. Uh, some of the other cool things that you can do with this, uh, you can change the candles. If you like a line or an area, uh, more power to you. I, I've, I've never been able to actually utilize that. To me, candles give me more information than anything else. Uh, you can act, you can, again, you can change what those candles look like by clicking on the gear cog and then going into the appearance tab. Um, and, and, or excuse me, the symbol tab here, you can, you can adjust uh, a lot of that stuff in here. The other cool thing that you can do here is you can compare. 
right? So uh, this is underutilized if you ask me. Let's say I have a chart with Apple here on a daily chart, and I want to know how Apple has done um, relative to the S&P 500. I'm going to go ahead and turn off some of those uh, moving averages, and I'm going to go ahead and click, oops, I'm going to click on compare, and I'm going to put in spy here. All right. And what this does is this gives me, it, again, it, it kind of tucks that away with the rest of your indicators. This gives me a line for SPY. It gives me a, a price here for SPY. And you can see that uh, SPY performed pretty well this year, but Apple absolutely destroyed the returns from SPY. It is so far away from, from what SPY did that if you weren't invested in Apple, uh, you likely did not get those uh, the, those outsized returns. So if you're going to do any of this, you can, you, or if you're going to do any of this analysis, please remember, you can always compare. You can actually compare to more than one too. You can add uh, symbols on here, um, compare to pretty much any ticker that's in our quoting system. So, okay, that, that does, that does that. Let me just make sure that the chat is here. Go blue. When is the Zing token launch? I don't have an update for you on the Zing token. Sorry about that. I don't see the toolbar. How to assess it on the left chart, please. I think you mean access. Again, if you don't see this toolbar, first of all, make sure you're on the chart tab, not the overview tab, and then make sure that it's not hidden with this little button down here. Okay. Um, Moving on, we are going to do, um, let me look through here. All right, we're going to do setting up a watch list. I'm going to go ahead and close these tools because I don't need them for this example. And uh, we talked a little bit about filtering your newsfeed by a watch list earlier. Let me show you how to actually create that watch list. You go ahead and click on the watch list tool. I'm doing it right here from the top. It's the same here from the left-hand menu bar. This will go ahead and open up the watch list tool. Um, once, once this is open, you'll be able to select a lot of your different watch lists. And then also you can add other tools to this workspace. One of the things I like to do, obviously, is to add a details tool here and go to the chart. This way, I'm going to go ahead and sort. Uh, Mike, you can sort any column in the watch list you want simply by clicking it. You'll notice that you have an up arrow, a down arrow, or no arrow that represents ascending, descending, or no sort. Uh, no sort diverts to, or reverts to the order in which you entered the tickers on the watch list. Uh, now that I have a watch list here, I can do a lot of cool things, right? I can kind of just go down my watch list just like we did in movers. I can actually click on those tickers. It will change the chart for me. If I have indicators or anything else on here, those will be maintained. Some of the other cool things that you can do in the watch list. Uh, one of my favorite things is the notes field. Um, I will often make notes about why I like a particular stock, why a stock put in a particular move, uh, where I think it's going in the future, different picks that I really, really like. Um, and I'll actually record those here with notes. You can also use this as a trading journal, especially if you trade the same stock over and over again. Anytime that you add a new note, as you can see, it timestamps it and puts the date on there. If you have more than one note, it will display uh, the multiple notes. I think I've got one here, but here, here's, here's one. Um, is that actually one of my uh, biggest positions, one of my biggest investments here, Chara. Um, so yeah, this is the huge feature here in, in the uh, watch list. I feel like this is also underutilized, kind of hides out in the corner. Not a lot of people use it. I absolutely love notes. Um, one more thing that you can do here is you can actually set up alerts. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, oh, before I do that, obviously you can add symbols simply by putting your cursor in the search bar and then go ahead and typing the symbol, selecting it from the list. Uh, Apple's already on this watch list, so I can't obviously add it. If you want to remove a ticker from the watch list, you simply right click on the ticker. It gives you this contextual menu, which has the option to remove uh, from this watch list. Uh, note to our Mac users out there, uh, Mac, because they like to do things their own way, uh, not criticizing them, it's just they're a little out there. Um, you have to enable the menu that allows you to, to right click to get the contextual menu. That's somewhere in the settings. I think you have to click on the little Apple and then settings. I can't remember exactly where it is, um, but you need to enable that menu. If you right click on a ticker in your watch list and you do not see this menu, that means there is an option for you to adjust in your settings to see that right click menu. So just, just a little note there about that. I often run into that issue. Um, 
You can, as you create more watch lists, you can export them to CSV. You can rename them. You can import a watch list. You can create a new watch list. You can delete your watch list. And then of course, all the way on the right-hand side of your watch list tool, you have the ability to select your different watch lists. I uh, love watch lists. I, as you can see, I've made a whole bunch of them here. I will often switch between them. I'll often use watch lists to track different baskets of stock uh, that I'm, that I'm, either watching or, or setting up to trade. So um, that those pretty much covers the basic tools. Now, the last one here that we saved the best for last year, this is the alerts, right? So if you click on this alarm bell at the top, this is your alerts menu. And let me explain how this works here. You have two different options. You have sound alerts and real-time email alerts. There is no SMS yet. That is something we are looking for for the future. No timeline, not available at this time. Um, most people can get email on their phone, so just do it that way. Uh, sound alert. Basically, if you select one of these sounds, what that means is that anytime a new piece of news is posted about any of the stocks on your watch list, you're going to hear a sound. Now, what that means is that if you have a big watch list like I do here with a lot of really popular stocks like Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Costco, and you select a sound alert for this, you are probably going to have less hair at the end of the day from pulling it out. Because again, remember what's happening here. Anytime a new piece of news is posted about any of the tickers on the watch list, it's going to play a sound. And it's not going to show you where it is. If you were just looking at this screen, you'd just be hearing sounds going off and you'd be like, what is going on? Skynet is taking over. That's not what's happening. What's happening is that there's a new piece of news out. And in the, the, the layout that you have, you're not set up to capture that. So one of the things that I would say is that if you want to use some of these alerts, especially the sound alerts, this is what I recommend that you do. Open up the watch list, open up a news feed right next to it. And then filter that news feed by that watch list. Okay. So now I the, I have a Benzinga, uh, excuse me, I have a, a advanced news feed on the right. The only filter that I've added is the watch list filter. So if I turn that sound alert on now, anytime a new piece of news is posted, guess where it's going to appear? It's going to appear in this filtered news feed. So again, I, it might not make sense. You know, if you set that sound alert, it's not as if your the alert's just going to pop up on your screen and make a whole bunch of sounds. You actually have to set your platform up. And if you need help with this, reach out to our team. We'd be happy to help you with this. Um, I also suggest taking the training course, the training material, which we're going to show you here in a sec. That stuff is really, really helpful as well. Um, getting back to some of the alerts here, the real-time email alerts, also very similar. This has This will just send you an email if there is a, a new piece of news that comes out um, through these sources, right? So if you only use Benzinga Wire, maybe you only want to turn that one on. Uh, if you use Wire and press releases, maybe you want to turn both of those on. If you have an SEC feed, maybe you want to set that up as well. Um, the last option here is going to be email summaries. These send you a summary of the days happening in the morning and in the evening. So it's not going to be anything in real time. This is more for if you're out during the day and you kind of want to go through the news flow that you missed while you were out. This email summary alert may be very, very helpful to you. I know a, a bunch of people that rely on these and, uh, and and they're upset when they're, and rightfully so, when they're, when they're missing one of these for whatever reason. So um, Leon just joined. Will this be available to watch again later? Yes, absolutely it will. There will be a recording later. I think the group will probably send that out to you. But yes, this will be available for you to view later. I apologize if I'm moving really quickly. There's a lot of content to cover. Uh, but again, that's one of the reasons why we're going to do this recording so that you can go back and view that on an as needed basis. That pretty much takes care of the watch list. Okay. So we've got two minutes left here. Perfect. Uh, we're going to show you how to access the help site. I just spoke about that in the upper right corner of your platform. You have four icons and I want to explain what all of them do. First one here is the little message icon with the exclamation point in it. This is to send feedback. Um, our entire development cycle works off client feedback. So if there's an option that we don't have that you want to see, please tell us. We don't know what we don't know. So tell us. Be as specific as possible. If you say, hey, add an alert to tell me what stock is going up, 
that's probably not going to do anything. There's really no content in there. A third grader can probably say that. However, if you said something like, hey, I'd really like to be able to scan off ATR differences, that's a lot more specific. And that gives our team a lot more to work with. So remember, if you're going to submit feedback, be as specific as possible, please. The next icon that you're going to see here is a question mark inside of a circle. That's going to denote the help site. If you click on this, it will open up a link to our help site. Our help site is great. There's a ton of FAQs, tutorial videos. I've done a whole bunch of interviews with other traders on FinTwit. A ton of my strat interviews, which are very, very uh, uh, popular, are in here. I highly advise that you go through this. We've spent a lot of time interviewing a lot of really good traders that discuss their strategy, what they use, how they do that. Um, I think that you'd find that very beneficial. Tutorial videos, this is basically how to do things within pro, right? Uh, you want to know how to capture Benzinga exclusives? Perfect. We got a video for you on that. Momentum scanner settings, something Christian did, we got that for you. So come in here and, and check that out. You can, of course, search. So if you want to look for a specific tool, as I spell it incorrectly, you can go ahead and search it here, press enter. It will return results that match your search. So uh, I really highly advise that you use the uh, the help site. Now, um, I, a little bit of a bonus here. I know we started a little bit late. We had a little technical issues. My meeting that I had after this has been canceled. I would be happy to give you guys an additional 10 or 15 minutes here for questions and other stuff that you want to see. My schedule freed up. So as long as it's good for you, I have no problem going here. Uh, Jacob, Jake, Harvey, whoever's out there, if I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing, please stop me. But otherwise, I would be happy to kind of go through a little bit more. I know we didn't have time for a question question session. I'd love to be able to do that here real quickly. So uh, let me go ahead and check up with the chat. Jacob, Jake, or Harvey. If I'm running over something, if I'm screwing stuff up, get at me. Let me know um, so that I can go ahead and stop. Um, okay, I'm just going through making sure you guys aren't screaming at me. Okay, let me go through the chat here. Um, do the notes persist with the ticker or do they get erased if we close the workspace tab? RM, great question. The notes are saved to our server. The notes are saved to our server. So even if you close your workspace, you will not lose them. I did not cover it. It's an excellent question. Same is true for our layouts, right? So if you spend all of this time setting up all of these different workspaces that do all of these really cool things for you, please, please, please save your layout. The way Benzinga Pro works is that it's going to remember this information and save it to your browser's local storage. That's all well and good if things are working correctly. But if you have advanced privacy settings um, because you're you're worried or your cache is cleared or you're clearing your browser history because you don't want people to see what you were doing, not judging any of you, but if that's what you're doing, you might end up losing this workspace. So I highly advise that you save this to our server. The other thing is, is if you use a computer at home and then also a computer in the office, remember everything that you set up is saved in your browser's local storage. So the local storage on your computer at home is different than the one at work. So what I, again, what I advise that you do, save the layout to the server. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And that way, if it ever gets cleared for any reason, instead of spending the time to set all of this back up again, you can simply load it. So let me show you how to do that. The three dots here in the upper right corner gives you a menu. You should absolutely be familiar with this menu. You have settings on the actual platform itself. You have account settings. This is also where you can cancel your account. You don't need to speak to one of us. You can do that through the platform here. So if it's over the weekend, you can still do it. Don't worry. Um, feedback is in here. Help is in here. Settings are in here. And the logout option. Um, one of the things that, that happens with the charts occasionally, and we're, of course, working on this, but uh, the charts are rely on data from a third party. So sometimes your login token may expire. It, you may have been logged in for a long time. Your connection may have had some choppiness. For whatever reason, if your login token expires and you try to resolve a chart, you'll probably end up seeing a blank chart. The best way to do that, if you ever run into that, the best way to resolve that is to use this logout function and log back in. When you log out and log back in, you reset all of those tokens that control your permissions and your chart will probably resolve. So just a little side note there. Um, the, the big thing that you want to pay attention to here is the layouts menu. And if I click on that, you'll see if you have any of them saved, they'll be listed in the save section. Um, 
And then you'll also automatically have a recent section. So even if you forgot to save them, chances are there will be a record of that in the recent section here. The layout that you're currently using, meaning the one that you're actually looking at here and, and, and using, is going to be denoted by this blue current banner. So if this is your first time and you've just set up all of these nifty little tools, when you come into this menu, the first thing that you want to do is find the record in the recent section that has the blue current banner next to it, and then click on the corresponding save button. This will move that record up into the saved section, and then you can go ahead and name that anything you want. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, press enter, and now I'm done. Now, if my layout ever gets deleted, if I have to clear my cache or cookies, or if I just, you know, fat finger a trade and I get all mad and I end up closing all my stuff out here, look at all this work that I'm erasing. Oh my God, I'm getting PTSD just looking at this. All right, well, let's say we do this and I, and I, I want to go back and I, I want to load that. All I have to do is go back into layouts here, go ahead and load up Benzinga Trading School click load, it's going to go ahead and do everything for me, right? It, I don't have to worry about setting those up or anything like that. All I need to do is click on load. It'll go ahead and bring all of those settings back here. And uh, and that, that includes all of the settings that you've put on the, on the different tools and, and all of that. So uh, how do pro members check out the happy hour? Uh, Taiwan, Britain, great question. The happy hour is uh, we, every day that it runs, which is Monday through Thursday, when the market is open, you'll see a little pop up here in the bottom left corner of your screen that has a link to the registration form. So uh, that is how you can access that. Um, where do I find a list of newsletters uh, uh, for BZ? Great question. Uh, one of the things that you can do is you can click on those three dots in the upper right corner and then click on premium trade ideas. This will launch a new tab that takes you to our premium ideas site. Uh, and then you can go ahead and, and check out some of the different uh, newsletters that we have. Nice. Another good question. You guys are really bringing the heat here. Um, uh, where do I get this? Is this available outside the U.S.? Yes, we are worldwide. We have customers all over the world uh, that use the uh, that use Benzinga Pro. You're not limited. This is not limited to um, uh, U.S. users. Another good question. All right. So let me know if you have any other questions on the platform. Um, can you show me how the VWAP works? Teresa, I can't really get into specific indicators and how they work. We don't necessarily have time for that. However, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have about the platform. Uh, so it's it looks like we're seven after here. I can give you another six minutes as long as that's okay with the group. I don't have anybody yelling at me yet. So it looks like we're okay. I'm just going to keep trucking until someone cuts me off here. Uh, all right, let me go through the chat here and see. Yeah, if there were other questions, uh, I didn't realize there's a notes tab. That's a game changer. Love it. Awesome. You should absolutely use that. I use it on a regular basis. Um, let me see. Just joined. Will this be available to watch again later? Yes. Oh, I already covered that. Uh, okay. So real quickly, we, we talked about the SEC here. Um, this is one of the things that this is what I was talking about. Uh, I don't go to Edgar anymore. I just use the SEC. I basically have a news feed here and you can see this is so old. It's actually just a regular news feed. I didn't even use the advanced news feed for what I'm doing here. I don't need any of those features from the advanced news feed. So I don't need to redo this. I have just the SEC and the press releases source turned on. Again, a lot of times when companies disseminate information for the first time, they do it via a press release. I turn it on here just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, the reality is, is when I, when I, filter for form four here, you can see I'm not getting anything from the press release feed. This is all the SEC feed. Um, this, what I was doing here was I was looking for insider transactions, right? So I have form four. The other thing that you can do is you can combine this with tickers, right? So if I want to see insider transactions for Apple, I can add a keyword filter and add a ticker filter and boom, the result list here is going to be all of those different insider transactions for Apple. If you click on the individual news post, it actually shows you the SEC form, the actual form that was filed here. So in this case, you can see that this person disposed of, that's what this D is here for, disposed of 9,500 shares at a price of 150. And at the end of this, they still had 37,000 shares of Apple left. Boy, that must be nice. Um, nice little nice little sale here. Uh, nice little sale there. Nice, nice little uh, come up there on some money. So this is one of the reasons why I use the SEC feed. Again, I keep this separate because I don't need this information all of the time. There are just specific 
instances where I need this information. So I go ahead and, and use it that way. Uh, Jason, you're asking about some of the other features. Great idea. Let's go through the scanner, right? That's I don't have time to go through all the ones that you asked about, but let's go through the scanner because this is one of our newer features and it is awesome. So uh, scanner here, this is, this was designed again to replace movers. It was designed to address some of the shortcomings of movers, one of which was the update period. So I had mentioned at the top of this, that uh, movers updates once per minute scanner, you can actually change that aggregation. So you can have it up update every 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, never update or real time. Uh, I don't, I don't like to use real time because it just updates very, very quickly. Sometimes I actually want to look at the list. So I keep it on 10 seconds. That gives me a little bit more time. It's worth noting that there's a pause button up here. And when you click on that, it won't update the results list until you hit play again. So if you need to review, if you want to keep it on real time and you want to review uh, the list of results there, you can absolutely do that. Just go ahead and pause it. Um, the refresh here, this is a manual refresh of this table. Uh, so you can, you can manually refresh your uh, results list anytime that you want. Um, we talked about the the columns and the refresh period, or excuse me, the pause and the refresh period. Columns, this allows you to pick and choose any of the columns that you want to see in the results list. So right now I can only see symbol, price, change, change from previous close, change over the past five minutes, volume, and average volume. Well, what if I wanted to see relative volume? Because that's something that I use in my scan all of the time. Well, I'm going to come down here to Arval and put that on. I also want to put short interest on here, right? I want to know if there's stuff short. So I'm going to go ahead and add those here, and now I can actually see that data. Presets, these are, if you're not really sure what to use, we have a couple of presets in here, uh, preset scans you, that you can use, or you can simply come up with your own. Now for the filters, right? You want to expand this filter menu. It's always going to default to the active filters that you have on. We have them broken down into three categories, price, reference, and fundamental. So again, I encourage you to go through these and kind of familiarize yourself with what's in here. Uh, this is a newer tool and we are constantly adding to this tool. So it's likely that you're gonna see some of these menus change around. Again, if there's something that you really want in here that's not in here, please tell us by using the send feedback button in the upper right corner of the platform. Uh, one of the things that I like to do, one of my favorite scans here um, revolves around relative volume, right? Uh, the other thing is, is that some of these, some of these um, fields here have little question marks to the right of them. And if they have that, it behooves you to hover over that because it will tell you about that specific filter and about how it works. So relative volume is a really good one because relative volume in our scanner works a little bit differently than a daily relative volume that you might already be familiar with. Relative volume compares the past five minutes of volume to the 10 day average volume for the same time period and presents that as a ratio. For example, an R vol of two at 10.05 a.m. means that the stock did two times the average volume that it normally does between 10 and 10.05. There's no way to change that five minute window. This is designed to pick up things in the moment. So that five minute window is the benchmark that it's using for that. Remember, this is expressed as a percentage. So I've put a minimum of three in here. What that means is that the relative volume for any of the stocks that appear in the results list must be at least three times the average volume over the given period that we're in. It's currently 1.13 p.m. Eastern time. So this is measuring the average volume between 1.10 and 1.15. And it's giving me that value here expressed as a percentage. So if I, if I click on this, to sort this, as you can do here, this AVCT, this stock that's really kind of crazy today, we actually already looked at this in another example here. This stock right now, according to our relative volume, is uh, 23.89 thousand times the average volume. Well, if we take a look at, at what the stock is doing today, boy, that sure makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because this stock has has been going ballistic, and if we take you know a, a, a even bigger look at that, really it started yesterday and it continued today. But if we go back to some of these other, look how anemic the volume is. Except it's going, it, it's happening today. So again, there's a lot of different filters in here. I encourage you to play around with them. There's no one right answer. Um, 
This is a very, very powerful tool. We're always looking to add to it. And so uh, go ahead and play around with it. That is about all of the time that we have for today. Uh, let me go through the chat here and see if there's anything that I can answer here real quickly. I took TradingView Pro, um, the same as Benzinga Pro platform. How can I link both in order to use the indicators in Benzinga Pro? Benjamin, great question. Unfortunately, that is not available. Um, we have a licensed portion of TradingView. They do not allow Pro TradingView members to log in via Benzinga. We'll see if that changes in the future. I don't have any inside information to give you about that. I apologize. That's just not available. Uh, Chelsea, is there a way to filter to show special dividend announcements? I do not believe that there is. That's a really good specific question. One of the things that I would point to here is I would actually try first to use the dividend calendar within Benzinga Pro, uh, or excuse me, uh, the dividend calendar within the calendar tool. And let me see, I don't think there's anything here that denotes it as special, but I believe special dividends are included in here. So if there's other, yeah, it would be in the frequency, right? Oh no, that's just the frequency of the regular dividend. I apologize. Um, no, that's, that's a really good question, Chelsea. I don't know of any off the top of my head. Let me brainstorm a little bit. If I come up with something, I'll let you know. Um, let me go through the rest of it here. Okay. That pretty much, that pretty much takes care of everything. So folks, um, I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, if you ever need further help, please uh, let our team know, right? You can use the little blue icon in the bottom right corner of your platform that will allow you to chat with our support team. Uh, you can always email me. I'll go ahead and put my email here in the chat. It's my name, Ryan Faluna at Benzinga.com. If you have questions, go ahead and email me. That's always going to be the best way to reach me. I'd be happy to answer your question to the best of my ability. And if you ask me a really good stump question like Chelsea did, I'll look into it and get back to you as needed. So uh, again, we're, we're, we're happy to help. We want this to work for you. The whole goal of this program is to help you find things. This, this program is not going to be something that spits out tickers that's going to turn you into a gazillionaire. Instead, it's going to give you tools that are going to help you find things. So you're still going to have to do some of that work yourself. But as you can see here, it's incredibly versatile and incredibly powerful. So again, I would be happy to come back. Jacob and Jake and, and Vin and, and Harvey, thank you everyone for inviting me. Um, I'd be happy to come back and do some of these sessions as needed. If you wanted more targeted sessions, reach out to Jacob. Let him know, hey, bring Ryan back. Have him show me this. Uh, if we can do it, we will be happy, happy to show you. So um, thanks, thanks everyone for joining us. I hope that was helpful for you. And I, let me just make sure... I don't need to do anything here. Um, I, I want to end this, but I, I want to make sure that the recording is good and everything else is good. So let me just uh, let me just make sure here. Man, I've got I've got so many missed messages. Oh my god! I'm just email. I'm just messaging Jacob. Thanks, Ryan. Can I have uh, can I have it installed on more than one laptop? So real quickly, while I'm waiting for a response here, um, so yes, so you're actually not limited to the amount of logins. Uh, the only caveat is you can only play the squawk at one location per account, but you can log into your pro account on multiple computers. You're not limited to that. Isn't that a good question? Uh, it is web based. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, again, the team is going to have a recording. They should provide it for you. Thanks everyone for joining us, for joining me. I hope to see you around soon. Good luck in your trading journey. Take care, everyone.